Hi everyone, it's Margaret here with 60 and Me. Hope you're having a good day today. So far, I have um, just woken up bright and cheery today. I had a really good sleep and um, I just feel like I'm, I'm ready to face the world. I've got so much going on right now, as you probably are too. It's just one of those really busy times of the year. I, I'm excited about it though. I get excited about these moments of um, energy, you know, where we feel suddenly like things are possible, you know, things can happen. And I think we go through these periods of like feeling, well, I'm, I'm in a groove. It's not, you know, it's okay. And then suddenly it's like, Yes, I can do this. I can face this day. I've got things to get on with. And so I'm having a cup of tea this morning. I'm having I'm having chamomile actually, which is a really interesting tea because um, I just, I, I like the taste of it. And I, I know it's supposed to help you with sleeping and I'm sure that's true, but um, I just like the taste of it. So cheers everybody. Hope that you've got a drink or cof of coffee or tea or something good um, that's gonna energize you for the day. Um, I've got a topic around this theme that I want to chat with you about in a minute, but I first want to mention that our sponsor for today's show is International Living. Now, as I've said before, International Living is a company that is working with people on the ground in countries around the world to dis discover opportunities for retiring abroad. If you go out to their website, it's internationalliving.com and then slash 60 and me, uh, you can just ask them to send you their global retirement index. I've actually taken a look at this one and it's really, really helpful. It's about 25 countries, uh, places that you might think of uh, retiring and they've got people that report back, you know, on the real, this, the real scoop. So that's uh, hopefully helpful to you if you're thinking about moving. Now, the topic here today though is about your energy. And do you always say to yourself, like, I'm tired all the time? I mean, for the past few months, I have really dealt with uh, sleep issues. And I know I've talked to you about this. Not so much not getting enough, but getting very fragmented sleep. And, you know, often people, as a result of that, will say, oh, I'm so tired all the time. But it really goes beyond sleep. And there's some things that you are doing, the habits that you've got, that just might be contributing to that. So we've done some research on this, and if you could check out the article, you can look at all the different sources. But again, don't no medical advice here. It's just a, just a chat, really, about sleep and um, other things that might be causing you to be tired all the time. And there's a difference between tired because you're not sleeping, and then a difference when you're tired, just exhausted. You know, you're just weary. And that's some of the stuff that might be going on here. The first thing, which is kind of counterintuitive, which I found really interesting is, you might be drinking too much caffeine. So too much coffee, too much caffeine, and that includes tea as well, there's, there's caffeine in tea. Too much caffeine can actually produce, um, you know, it has lots of antioxidant powers and it's really, you know, can give you a little burst of energy, but too much coffee over time will make you feel more tired. Now caffeine, I'm just reading my notes here, blocks brain receptors for adenosine, adenosine, which is a molecule that fights um, or you know, induces fatigue. So the body produces these um, adenosine receptors and you just get tireder and your and your coffee just stimulates the, um, uh, these uh, or blocks these receptors. It's really an interesting phenomenon. So at the short term, it might make you feel energetic. In the long term, it can actually make you feel tireder. So too much caffeine is actually counterintuitively going to make you feel tired. The second thing you might be, that might be going on is you might be iron deficient. Now, iron deficiency is very common because it's not in a lot of our um, foods. And if you don't eat meat or a lot of meat, then you you might not be getting enough iron. Um, and it is in other places, of course. I mean, there's you know oysters and lentils and spinach. There's other non-meat places that you can get iron. But if you're if you're tired all the time, really exhausted, you just might want to go to the doctor and get a test and see how your what your iron levels are because it could very well be that you're not getting enough. Um, you could be gaining weight, maybe feeling anxious for no particular reason. That, that's, those are the kinds of signs of iron deficiency. Dizziness, headaches, there's a few others that you can, that you can look up, but um, check it out. It could just be something that's uh, causing your tiredness. Another thing is that you're eating a lot of refined carbohydrates. Now, these are things like pasta and rice and um, breakfast cereals, white bread. These are all things that actually are not giving you any nutrients. They're just being processed as simple sugars. And those give you a very short burst of energy. But then in the long term, they just wear you out. You just, you crash. You just simply crash. And then you, if you switch to whole grains, even just doing that would help. 
So instead of just using white rice, just try some brown rice, or instead of whole, uh, just white bread, try a wheat bread. And I know we get into our routines of what you love, and you, it's like almost um, a habit that you buy this certain kind of food. But if you, if you are feeling overly tired, check out the, the carbohydrates and see what you might be eating that's causing that uh, exhaustion, that crash. Another thing you can do is to, uh, you turn to added sugars. Now, this is, this is a really hard one because there's a lot of sugar hidden in, uh, in places that we might not expect it. I mean, we, I know you probably are aware, for example, that um, ketchup, uh, tomato paste, all those kinds of things have sugar added to them. And unless you look in the back of the, uh, in the box or the tube or ingredients, you might not even know that there is sugar in there. So I, ch I actually check just about everything now for sugar. And there's some uh, products like stevia, which is um, a, a product that's um, okay. It's made from plants. It's a plant-based sugar. But other sugar, uh, aspartame and those sorts of uh, additives, um, well, I, I would say that personally, I don't think they're that good for you, but you can check out the, the statistics to make that decision yourself. So eat some eat fruit if you're really needing um, uh, you know, a little burst of energy. And be careful though, again, certain um, fruits have very uh, difficult to digest um, uh, um, fiber, like mangoes, for example. So that's another thing to consider though, that you're, you're taking and eating a lot of hidden sugar. One other thing that you might be missing or lacking in is magnesium. Now, it, the notes that I wrote here were from a, a research that says a lot of the, most Americans, a lot of Americans are dealing with a magnesium deficiency. Uh, a lot of this is because um, the land, the, the earth that our plants are being grown in uh, do not contain these trace minerals. So magnesium is a super important one. And it's actually responsible for breaking, or one of the things it does is break down glucose in the body and turn it into energy. So if you haven't got enough magnesium, then you definitely are not you're potentially not getting enough um, energy from that source. But bananas are great, almonds, spinach, there's, there are sources of magnesium. But again, you sometimes have to eat and drink a lot of this uh, to get the full amount. So you might want to take a magnesium supplement. But again, check with your doctor, see what they say. Another thing might be the case is that you're dehydrated. And this is kind of a catch-22 because, um, you know, water is really a simple thing and we sometimes forget it. It's very important to stay hydrated and that, that sort of um, pumps up all the cells in our body. It actually, um, you know, if, you, if you're not drinking, drinking enough water, tr just try it. Try drinking another glass or two. See if that perks up your energy a little bit. I think that that's another great, very inexpensive, free, if you're not drinking bottled, um, water is a great source of, um, of hydration and energy. Finally, the other thing you might be low on is, um, oh, there's two more, is you might be low on melatonin. Now, melatonin is, the, is what helps you to fall asleep. It's your body, it produces it naturally. And it's one thing that I do take, um, or I have took in the past, um, to, to help with my sleep. It says um, on the package to do like two weeks at a time and not then not like habitually take it. It's not a drug, it's not addictive in that sense, but it's kind of um, telling your body a message that it should be telling you itself. You should be producing more melatonin. So as you get older, melatonin production does go down and that's, that's a reality. But you can do things like tart cherry juice. That's a really good source of um, uh, uh, melatonin and also lean proteins. And that's the, that's the final thing that I was going to say you might want to look at. Are you eating enough lean protein? Uh, they take the longest to digest. They are actually the most satiating um, in terms of macronutrients. Uh, they say that, in fact, they, the experts, say that you might want to consider incorporating protein into every single diet, every single meal that you eat. And that doesn't have to be meat. Um, you know, it's lentils and other things that have protein in them. Um, our muscles degenerate as we get older. There's just no getting around some of these changes that our body makes. And so some of the things like eating lean protein uh, and making a point of it is, is really, really important. And so if you're feeling lethargic, low energy, uh, kind of just, you know, just exhausted, it could be one of these things I just mentioned. Check out the article, I'll leave the link for you there so you can read it again if you want to get more information. But um, I think that's worth considering and talking to your doctor or your pharmacy person about it. So do you feel tired all the time? 
Are these suggestions familiar to you? Are you doing any of those things or not checking any of those things? I'd love to have a conversation on this. I hope you found it useful. I really do. It's one of the most important things. I mean, how can we get on with our lives and do all these amazing things if we're tired? So it's important to stay healthy and energized and well. So I hope this has been useful. It's just one of these little chats. If you've got other topics, by the way, that you'd like us to share and talk about, please leave them in the section below. We've got so many articles on our website, ranging from you know fashion, beauty, all the way to travel, lifestyle, reinvention, caregiving, all kinds of cool stuff, and uh, celebrity information if you're interested in that, and um, just you know a wealth of entertainment for you. So we've also got a games site, by the way, on our website, 60me.com, and that's totally free. You can play your little heart out on different games and a lot of other information there too that you might find useful. By the way, if you want to receive our newsletter, you just have to go up to 60andme.com and then forward slash membership, and you can, you can join and get our newsletter sent to you. So we'd love to know, do you feel tired all the time? What, might you, what do you think you might be doing that could be changed? Have a really, really good day, everybody. Hope that you've got a high energy, fun day ahead of you. And I look forward to being back here and chatting with you in the future. Take good care. Bye for now.